all the rhinos in the area use the same heap. The calf soon learns the technique. Odors from the dung heap provide information about the status of the rhinos, such as sex and age, and particularly their readiness for breeding. Ramu, the strong male, is particularly interested in the information the dung notice board announces. Ever on the lookout for females, his sense of smell is acute, and once he has identified the owner of an attractive scent, he will track her down. A powerful jet of urine signals that he is definitely one of Kaziranga's dominant males. His range will overlap with that of other big bulls, but usually their urine markers help them to avoid each other. The greater one-horned rhino is the only species of rhino to have retained its incisor teeth. They use them to jab open-mouthed at their opponents. These sharp incisors can inflict serious damage. The horn is almost useless. The battle can go on for hours, a series of threats and withdrawals, as each bull tries to find a chink in the other's armor. The plate-like, loose neck folds are the most important part of a rhino's livery, protecting the soft part of the throat. These fights appear to take place in slow motion, like much of the rhino's life, but the outcome can be fatal. A single wound can easily become infected and leave the mighty beast defenseless. Fortunately for him, she has drawn him into long grass, where he's hidden from his rivals. But even now, she doesn't seem wholly convinced. After all, he weighs over two tons, and the rhino was not designed for copulation. Nonetheless, this balancing act will last hours. For most of the rhinos, the days stretch out with little to mark their passing. After a 16-month gestation period, it will take only a few seconds for Beth to give birth to the baby, which already weighs about 40 kilos. In a natural environment, the newborn has to stand up as soon as possible to escape predators. Here, the mother uses her horn to prompt him. Dorothée prays for this small miracle to happen with Beth. The nerves, the, the, the feeling of this is it, this is what we've been doing for six months, this is the time, well, I can't even explain, it was something unbelievable. Their awe soon turned to anguish. They realized that the baby was in a breech position where it's born feet rather than head first. This meant that the newborn could be starved of oxygen in the birth canal and possibly brain damaged. It was a nail biting moment. We sat waiting for this little rhino to get up because we thought that maybe he had been damaged. And eventually after about two minutes, this little thing shook itself off and the mommy cleaned it up. It was absolutely awesome. It was such a phenomena, 
at that stage to see that the herd was all around her and so involved with what she was doing. This just never happens. Normally she'll just chase them all away. We just came to the end of a culmination of many days and crying and fighting and performing and worrying and we'd got it. Another great moment caught in the act. Baby Rhino also suckles greedily, but Jamna's milk is very thin and will not satisfy Kishan's needs for long. Unlike the elephant calf, which gets everything she needs from her mother, Kishan has to learn to supplement her diet. She gets many of her minerals by eating mud around the wallow. Rhino eat dung as well as mud. The prehensile lip of the greater one-horned is ideal for manipulating this food. The fact that the lip can be folded away makes this species the most adaptable of all rhinos. But they have to be selective. Youngsters learn exactly what to eat by copying their mothers. The flexible lip allows the greater one horn to graze flat swathes of grass and browse on low vegetation. By the time Kishan reaches adulthood, she'll be devouring 200 pounds of fodder every day. But lush-looking palm fronds are not on the menu. Sharp thorns defend these against Kaziranga's herbivores. As the year advances, the grass begins to run out and temperatures soar. The rhinos turn their attention to the rafts of water hyacinth that build up in Kaziranga's pools. This invasive plant was introduced by man some years ago and now chokes the still water. Although the rhinos appear to enjoy it, it is unpalatable and provides little nourishment. Rhinos have to consume huge volumes to satisfy themselves. <laughs>